Hi traders, Gavin McMaster here from Options Trading IQ doing a video collaboration with Bar Chart. Today we're looking at something that's becoming increasingly more important in the market as more and more traders start to focus on it. And that is gamma exposure, the gamma flip point, and put and call walls. So topics that you might not be overly familiar with, but as I said, they're becoming more and more important as more traders start to focus on these things. So we're going to take a good look into it and how it can influence stock prices and index prices uh, and also volatility as well. So let's get stuck into today's video. Just a quick reminder that everything discussed is for educational purposes only is generally nature and does not take into account your personal circumstances. So let's do a quick refresher on what is gamma exposure. So gamma exposure, often shortened to GEX or GEX, is a way of measuring how market makers and option traders may need to hedge their books based on the option positions outstanding. When a market has high positive gamma, dealers are typically short options. So they hedge by buying when the market falls and selling when it rises. So positive gamma, the market makers buy stocks when the market falls and they sell stocks when it rallies. This creates a stabilizing effect. Prices drop around and volatility is dampened. It makes sense, right? Because if prices are going down and the market makers have to buy stocks to hedge, it's going to help prevent them falling too much further or, or have them rebound uh, quicker. But when gamma exposure turns negative, the opposite starts to happen. Dealers hedge in the same direction as the move, selling into weakness and buying into strength. So again, when we've got negative gamma, the stock or the market is going down and the dealers have to keep selling in order to hedge. So it amplifies the down move or amplifies the up move. And that's why in the last few years we've seen when we start to get a downtrend, they can start to really pick up speed quite quickly. It's all because of this gamma exposure. Let's talk about the gamma flip point. The gamma flip point is the level where market makers shift from being in a positive gamma regime to a negative gamma regime. Think of it as a dividing line in the sand. Above the flip point, dealers act as a dampener, so they're reducing market volatility. But below the flip point, they're going to act as an accelerator of volatility. They're going to amplify the stock moves and volatility is going to pick up. So think about how that could be really important when it comes to our option trades. If we're above the flip point, volatility is most likely to stay fairly low. Once we go below the gamma flip point, volatility might pick up. So option selling strategies might not be a good idea at that point. Traders watch this level closely because when the index or stock trades below the gamma flip, price swings can get much more violent. Conversely, above the flip point, markets often feel more stable and range bound. So positive gamma is great for option sellers. Remember, as option sellers, we typically want volatility to stay low. We're generally negative vega with most of our option selling strategies. So positive gamma or positive gex stock or index being above the gamma flip point, that's very, very good for option sellers. When we get below the flip point, that's when things can get a little bit dangerous. Let's go and take a look at some examples. So if we go over to bar chart, we're just looking at the S&P 500 now, uh, the SPY ETF. If we go down here under options and gamma exposure, we'll see we've got our chart here. At the moment, SPY is trading at 650 and the gamma flip is at 646.97. So not very far below where the market is currently trading. So it's definitely something we want to be aware of because if the market starts to drop even just a little bit and gets below that gamma flip point, losses could start to pick up steam pretty quickly. Volatility could get elevated rather quickly. And we can kind of see here the net uh, gamma exposure or the aggregate gamma exposure. And we can see it flips very negative once we get below 646. So if we do start to drop and we get below that flip point, we could really see volatility pick up and we could see more and more selling because dealers need to hedge on the downside. And we've got a great little cheat sheet here or, or legend, negative gamma. When price is below the gamma flip point, dealers are considered net short gamma, often from puts, which means they will sell as prices fall and buy as prices rise, amplifying price swings and increasing volatility. This can create resistance for the market on the upside and lead to accelerated moves on the downside. So a nice little cheat sheet. If you ever forget, we've got our little positive gamma and negative gamma explanations here, and we've got our flip point on the chart. And if we think about that from an options perspective, 
if we do get below the flip point, what could be a relevant option strategy that we might look at? Well, I had the idea of long straddles, long straddles and strangles. If we go over here to our uh, long straddle and strangles tab, just here, we might want to pick, now it depends, some people will go out a couple of months with long straddles and strangles so that we don't suffer too much time decay. So we'll go and look at November. And the market's currently trading at 650. So if we were to do that at the money straddle, long straddle, we can click on the image here and that'll show us our profit and loss graph with a break even price. Where are we here? 682 and 618. We can have a look at our groups as well. We've got a lot of positive Vega. So remember when the market goes below the flip point, volatility might increase. So being positive Vega is a good thing. Now we might choose different strikes. If the market does go below the flip point, we might want to choose whatever is at the money at the time. It might be 645 or 640. I'm just using this one because um, SPY is currently at about 650. But again, if it drops and goes below the flip point, we might be down at 645 or 640. I'd probably look at those strikes. Let's look at another stock. And Lululemon has been in a pretty bad downtrend. Let's actually just go and look at the chart. You can see here over the last six months, it's been very, very volatile in a very nasty downtrend. And if we look at the gamma exposure, it's actually below the flip point. So we could potentially expect that big moves up and down could continue in Lululemon, particularly while it stays below the gamma flip point of 191. So if we're incorporating this into our trading, we could look to be doing long straddles and strangles, anything that's positive vanguard or is going to benefit from a big move in the underlying on stocks that are below the flip point. And we could be doing negative vega or regular option selling strategies, condors, short straddles, short strangles on the stocks and indexes that are above the flip point. If you want to drill further in, you can go down and look at some of the other charts as well, which will show um, the open interests by certain strike prices and across different expiration dates. And we can see here all through the expiration dates, Lulu has negative gamma. Whereas if we go back to SPY, we can see a bit of positive, quite a bit of negative gamma here, which is interesting, isn't it? So I wonder when we start to roll off some of these short-term options, maybe this is going to start to have more of an effect on the overall gamma of SPY. We may actually flip to negative gamma. So definitely something that we want to keep an eye on, particularly when we're this close to the flip point. We probably want to be checking this almost every day, particularly if SPY drops, we know it's going to be getting closer to that flip point. If SPY is rallying and going up, it's probably okay. We don't need to check it every day. But certainly when we're getting close to the flip point like this, if we do have a down day or a couple of down days, it's definitely worth checking this and thinking, you know, have we gone into a, a flip? Are we in negative gamma? Is volatility likely to pick up from here? Right, let's go and look at the NASDAQ. We've got a gamma exposure. And similar to SPY, we're very, very close to that flip point. So we want to be keeping an eye on this one as well, um, almost every day, particularly if the index has a drop. And if we go down, we can see we've got a fair bit of negative gamma in the first couple of expirations. We've actually got a lot of positive gamma for December. So that could be a potential um, good sign for the NASDAQ once some of this negative gamma starts to roll off, we might have more positive gamma overall. Let's look at SMCI. Again, we're above the flip point. So there's a good chance that this stock will show reduced or low volatility going forward. Let's look at a couple more examples on popular stocks and NVIDIA. Again, quite far above the flip point here. So that's very, very positive. That is a good sign that we might see lower volatility or we won't see big price moves in NVIDIA over the next few days or weeks. Yeah, let's look at PLTR. Again, another one that's quite far above the flip point. Very, very positive gamma. So we can be pretty confident in our option selling strategies on NVIDIA and PLTR. Another concept that's important when it comes to gamma exposure is put and call walls. So alongside gamma exposure, it's useful to track put walls and call walls. And we'll have a look on the charts in a minute. But these are simply strike prices with very large open interest inputs or calls. A put wall is a large concentration of put open interest, often creating a support level because dealers may need to buy stock to hedge 
at those levels. Likewise, on the upside, we could have a call wall if there's a large concentration of call open interest, which often acts as resistance since dealers may need to sell stock to hedge at those levels. When price approaches these walls, it can stall or reverse as hedging flows kick in. This is why they're often referred to as magnetic levels in the market. Let's go back to bar chart and we'll take a look at the walls that we can add to the charts. So if we look at PLTR, we click on call wall, we can see there's a call wall here, 165. So it's very possible that the price could be drawn up to that level at 165. It could act like a magnet, but then the price might stall out at that level as hedging kicks in. So again, thinking about that from an option trading perspective, what's a strategy that might be relevant here? Well, we could look at maybe placing a butterfly around 165. Butterflies are negative vega, so they're going to benefit if prices stay relatively stable and don't move around too much, volatility stays low. And we've also got a potential resistance point here at 165 where the stock might stall out. Let's go and have a look at NVIDIA. Same thing, we've got a call wall up here at 175. So again, the price might be drawn up to that level, might act as a magnet, but then it might stall out at that level. So again, a butterfly placed at 175 could be a really interesting option trade. Let's have a look at SPY. And the call wall again is right here at 650. So prices are likely to stay relatively stable at this level, unless we drop below that flip point. And if we look at the put wall, the put wall is down at 640. So that could act as a little bit of a support level. If we do get below the flip point, there could be some potential support there at 640. But again, remember below the flip point, we could see elevated volatility and faster moves as well. So it could blow right through that support level. Let's take a look at Lulu, which was a stock that was below the flip point. And the put wall is right here at 165. So we might see the stock start to find a little bit of support here. But again, being that it is negative overall gamma, we could still see some forced selling on the downside as dealers continue to hedge as the stock is dropping. So how can traders use this information? Well, I think we've kind of covered that a little bit, but let's just go over it again. You can think of it as an extra layer of context. So we're not necessarily using gamma exposure and gamma flip points, put walls and call walls as a standalone reason for making a trade, but we're using it in conjunction with other indicators that we're using in the market to give us an overall picture of where the stock could potentially be headed and what we might see from volatility. Is it going to be increasing volatility or are we going to see reducing volatility? Remember, if you know where the gamma flip point is, you can gauge whether the market environment favors stability or volatility. Remember, positive gamma above the flip point, great for option selling strategies. If it's below the flip point, we might see elevated volatility. It could be great for long vega or positive vega trades. If you know where put and call walls are, you can better anticipate support and resistance zones as well. For example, if SPY is trading just above the gamma flip with a big call wall overhead, you might expect price to be pinned in a range. And that was kind of what we saw. It's just above the flip point and there's a big call wall at 650. And for the last couple of weeks, SPY has been pretty stuck in this range, in a very tight range. So um, it does make a lot of sense. But if SPY breaks below the flip and heads towards a major put wall, you may want to prepare for sharper moves lower. Some final thoughts, gamma exposure, the flip point and put and call walls give traders an insight into how option positioning may influence price moves. They don't predict direction on, on their own, but they add valuable insight into the forces at work beneath the surface. And remember, more and more people are watching these indicators now. Make sure you check out Bar Chart's gamma exposure and option flow tools to start applying these concepts in your own trading. I'd love to know if you've used gamma exposure in your trading, or is this something you will now start checking more regularly after watching this video? If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.